بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة, محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته so إن شاء الله we'll continue from where we left off last week we'll start with a new lesson where the Shaykh will be discussing the affair of uh, judging or ruling uh, by other than what Allah has sent down. So the Shaykh, <clears throat> he says, Al-Hukmu bi-ghayri ma anzal Allah. So ruling or judging uh, with other than uh, what Allah has sent down. <clears throat> he says, من مقتضى الإيمان بالله تعالى وعبادته الخضوع لحكمه والرضا بشرعه بالرجوع إلى كتابه وسنة رسوله عند الاختلاف في الأقوال وفي الأصول وفي الخصومات وفي الدماء والأموال وسائر الحقوق. So the Sheikh opens with him and he opens with this and he says that from what's required of having Iman or belief in Allah Ta'ala and worshipping him and humbling uh, oneself to his laws and being pleased with that which he has uh, sent down by way of laws and returning to them, i.e. returning to the Quran, the book and the sunnah of, the, of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when there is um, a difference or uh, a dispute uh, whether that's to do with the dispute in speech or, or foundational affairs uh, or argumentation in things uh, that concern, for example, uh, wealth, uh, whether, you know, you know, all kinds of uh, things such as wealth uh, in terms of blood, people's rights, uh, relations and other things that require judgment. Then we go back to um, the book and the sunnah. Then the Shaykh goes on to say, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْحُكُمْ وَإِلَيْهِ الْحُكُمْ فَيَجِبُ عَنَ الْحَاكِمْ أَنْ يَحْكُمُ بِمَا أَنْزَلَ اللَّهِ وَيَجِبُ عَلَى الرَّعِيَّةِ أَنْ يَتَحَاكَمُ إِلَى مَا أَنْزَلَ اللَّهِ فِي كِتَابِهِ وَسُنَّةِ رَسُولِهِ قَالَ تعالى فِي حَقِّ الْبُلَاتِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أن تؤدوا الأمانات إلى أهلها وإذا حكمتم بين الناس أن تحكموا بالعدل وقال في حق الرعية يا أيها الذين آمنوا أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم فإن تنازعتم في شيء فردوه إلى الله والرسول والرسول إن كنتم تؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر ذلك خير وأحسن تعويلا ثم بين أنه لا يجتمع الإيمان مع التحاكم إلى غير ما أنزل الله فقال تعالى ألم ترى إلى الذين يزعمون أنهم آمنوا بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك يريدون أن يتحاكموا إلى الطاغوت وقد أمروا أن يكفروا به ويريد الشيطان أن يذلهم ضلالا بعيدا إلى قوله تعالى فلا وربك لا يؤمنون حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينهم ثم لا يجدوا في أنفسهم حرجا مما قديت ويسلموا تسليما So we'll stop there for a second and we'll translate that in Shawa. So then the Sheikh he goes on to say that that Allah subhanahu wa indeed Allah you know, the source of the laws are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should judge by that which is sent down. 
by way of laws that we find in the Quran and the Sunnah. So it says obligatory upon uh, the one who's judging that that they judge by that which Allah has sent down, and it's ob and it's obligatory upon the citizens, the people of, who are below the rulers, that they judge uh, with that which Allah has sent down from His book, the Quran, and the Sunnah of the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then the Sheikh says that. Uh, it quotes an ayah that where Allah talks about or mentions with regard to the right of what's upon the rulers. And that's the ayah from Surah Al-Nisa verse 58. So let's have a look at that. Verse 58. Verily, Allah commands that you should render back the trust to those to whom they are due. And that when you judge between men, you judge with justice. Verily, how excellent is the teaching which He Allah gives you. Truly, Allah is ever, uh, Allah is ever all hearer, all seer. So that's with regards to the rulers. Then, in regards to the rights and what's upon the citizenship, the ones who are below the rulers who are being ruled, then the Sheikh brought the ayah from uh, the same surah, Surah Al Nisa, verse fifty-nine, where Allah said. O oh, you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and those of you Muslims who are in authority and if you differ in anything amongst yourselves, refer it to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam if you believe in Allah and in the last day, that is better and more suitable for final uh, determination. So the ruler has rights and responsibilities and the citizenship that are under him the ones who are being ruled also have rights and a, respon and a responsibility as well. It works both ways as the Sheikh has explained here. Then the Sheikh, he goes on to say, then, then it's been clarified as well that Iman, belief, it doesn't come together as in where he says, La iman ma that, that belief doesn't meet or come together, be brought together with uh, ruling or judging, uh, uh, if the judgment that's being used or the rules or the laws are being used are other than what Allah had sent down. So that's telling us that there's a, if someone does that, then there's a there's an issue with the iman, as the Sheikh will explain um, later, inshallah. And then the Sheikh brought an ayah as well from. Surah Al-Nisa, Surah Al-Nisa again, verse 60, where it was said, Have you seen those hypocrites who claim that they believe in that which has been sent down to you, and that which was sent down before you, and they wish to go for judgment in their disputes to the Tawud, i.e. false judges, etc., while they have been ordered to reject them, but Shaitan, Satan, wishes to lead them, far astray and that from that ayah all the way you can refer to this yourselves from surah nisa verse 60 all the way to verse 65 where the sheikh quotes verse 65 so verse 65 from the same surah but know by your lord they can have no faith until they make you muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam judge in all disputes between them and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions and accept them with full submission. So the Shaykh brings that as evidence with regards to what is mentioned there. Then he goes on to say, فَنَفَى سُبْحَانَهُ نَفْيًا مُؤَكَّدًا بِالْقَسَمْ الْإِمَانِ عَمَّنْ لَمْ يَتْحَاكُمْ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَيَرْضَى بِحُكْمِهِ وَيُسْلَمْ لَهُ أو يسلم له كما أنه حكم بكفر الكفر ولاة الذين لا يحكمون بما أنزل الله وبظلمهم وفسقهم قال تعالى. so then the sheikh goes on to say that and this obviously is a negation of the person's iman the one who doesn't rule and make Allah and the messenger judge. so if you don't take the Quran and the Sunnah to be your judge and you're not pleased with it. Then that negates the person's iman. The Shaykh will explain this in more detail as we go on, inshallah, over the next few pages. 
And then the Sheikh mentions um, a few ayahs here as well with regards to this from Surah Al Ma'idah, verse 44, uh, verse 45, and uh, verse 47, parts of them. So the first from part of verse 44. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Part of verse 45 وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْظَالِمُونَ And the last part of verse 47 وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ And so if you go to and, and have a look at these, the, the meanings of these then we'll see uh, what's being said here inshallah. And whosoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed, such are the kafirun, i.e. disbelievers of a lesser degree, as they do not act on Allah's laws. Then the next verse, 45, towards the end. And whosoever does not judge by that which Allah has revealed, such are the volumoon polytheists and wrongdoers of a lesser degree. And then 40, towards the end of 47, um, and whosoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed, then such people are the fasikun, the rebellious, i.e. disobedient of a lesser degree to Allah. So the Shaykh he goes on to say, وَلَا بُدَّ مِنَ الْحُكْمِ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ وَالتَّحَاكُمْ إِلَيْهِ فِي جَمِيعِ مَوَادِ النِّزَاعِ فِي الْأَقْوَالِ الْإِشْتِهَادِيَّةِ بَيْنُ الْعُلَمَاءِ فَلَا يَقْبَلُ مِنْهَا إِلَّا مَا دَلْ عَلَيْهَا الْكِتَابُ وَالسُنَّةِ مِن وفي المراف وفي المرافعات والخصومات في سائر الحقوق لا في الأحوال الشخصية فقط كما في بعض الدول التي تنتسب إلى الإسلام فإن الإسلام كل لا يتجزا لا يتجزا قال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا يا أيها الذين آمنوا ادخلوا في في السلم كافة وقال تعالى أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ So then the Shaykh, he goes on uh, to say, so therefore it's incumbent that that, um, that we judge by that which all, uh, by, uh, by what Allah sent down and that we judge be, between ourselves uh, in all of our affairs with that which Allah sent down. Um, and especially for example, in, in, in if there's if there's speech, for example, or rulings, or fatawa, for example, wherever it may be, and it's for example an affair of ishtihad uh, between the scholars, it should always go back to the Quran and the Sunnah. And then the Sheikh said that it's it's not no, nothing is accepted except if it. Um, if its um, origin or source or reference point is the Quran and the Sunnah, without any partisanship, the uh, uh, a partisanship to a a particular thought or any bias to an Imam, this should be all excluded from that and be based on what the Quran and the Sunnah, authentic Sunnah says. And, you know, with regards to disputes and other things like that, all of this and with regards to the rights of people and other than that, all of this, it should go back to the Quran and the Sunnah. But the Sheikh says, for example, there's, uh, you know, you see the issues within some uh, uh, Muslim countries, for example, that ascribe to Islam, where there's issues with regards to a separation of, 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 of rules uh, and not ruling by uh, the Quran. And the Sunnah. Just give me one second. Okay, I think there was an issue with the audio. Inshallah, there should be, um, I'll put a different recording up for this lesson, Inshallah, on YouTube. I'll continue from where, we, where, where I was. <coughs> Apologies. 
So the Sheikh he goes on to say, Barakallah, uh, Brother Muhammad, for letting me know. So basically, um, the, where was I? The Sheikh he goes on to say that some countries they they kind of like separate. Uh, there's some rules Islamically used, and then others there's you know there's a separation, and 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 the Sheikh brings an ayah from the Quran with regards to this issue as well, from Surah Surah Al Baqarah, verse two hundred and eight. So if we go there and have a look, we'll see inshallah, verse two hundred and eight. O you who believe, enter perfectly in Islam by obeying all the rules and regulations of, of the Islamic religion. So this was the Shaykh saying that we have it's, it's upon every Muslim to follow fully. I'm going to be a Muslim fully. And then also the Shaykh brings an ayah from Surah to Baqarah, verse uh, 50, uh, 85, sorry. Where he mentions, let me pull this up. Then, do you believe in in a part of the scripture and reject the rest? So there's this. So you can't. There can't be like half an hour for a, a bit of this and rejecting some of it. You have to accept all of it and and you know act upon all of it. And then the sheikh he continues. Yeah, Yeah, it was just the um. Uh, the microphone uh, setting, uh, it wasn't uh, It wasn't on any particular device, we just changed it. Which is strange, should have checked it first to be honest. Normally it works fine. Um, okay, so then the Sheikh continues, he says, وَكَذَلِكَ يَجِبُ عَلَىٰ أَتْبَاءِ الْمَذَاهِبِ أَنْ يَرُدُّ أَقْوَالَ أَنْ يَرُدُّ أَقْوَالَ أَئِمَّتِهِمْ إِلَى الْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ فَمَا وَافَقَهُمَا أَخَذُوا بِهِ وَمَا خَالَفَهُمَا رَدُّوهُ دُونَ تَعَصُّبٍ أَوْ تَحَيُّزٍ وَلَا سِيِّمَا فِي أُمُورِ الْأَقِيدَةِ فَإِنَّ الْأَئِمَّةَ فَإِنَّ الْأَئِمَّةَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ يُوصُونَ بِذَلِكَ وَهَذَا مَذْهَبُهُمْ جَمِيعًا فَمَنْ خَالَفَ ذَلِكَ فَلَيْسَ مُتَّبِعًا لَهُمْ وَإِنْ انْتَسَبَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَهُوَ مِمَّنْ قَالَ اللَّهُ فِيهِمْ اتَّخَذُوا أحبارهم ورهبا ورهبانهم أربابا من دون الله والمسيح بن مريم. So then the Sheikh he goes on to say he mentions that it's obligatory upon uh, the followers of the schools of of thought because you know we all ascribe to some school of thought. But the important point is this: the Sheikh makes he says that for the ones who are following uh, particular for the followers of the schools of thought. Upon them is to uh, whatever the imams, their imams or their scholars say, they should revert everything to the kitab and the sunnah. That should be the primary uh, reference point. So if what they say agrees with the Quran and the authentic sunnah, then we take it. And whatever they say, if it goes against the Quran and the authentic sunnah, then we reject it without any partisanship or bias towards the imams that we may like or the schools of thought that we follow. This is an important principle. A lot of people fall into issues with this where they, if somebody mentions an authentic hadith and it's clear, they won't accept it because they think it goes against the mother. But the Sheikh says that this was the methodology of all of the scholars, as all you know, even the four imams and other than them, before them and after them and them, their uh, way was that if anything went against the Quran and the Sunnah, they said that don't take and uh, reject what we said. They, they said reject it. They were upon this way and methodology. So if someone ascribes to um, a particular school of thought and then they go against that school of thought in this affair of accepting the Quran and the Sunnah and accepting it over uh, being partisan uh, and biased towards an Imam for whatever X, Y and Z reasons then how can even though they say they ascribe to that school of thought are they really uh, part of that school of thought? 
uh, and the Sheikh mentions a question, a rhetorical question, and the answer is no, that they're not part of that, even though they may say that they they ascribe to or they are part of it. They're not because they're not actually following what that particular that you said anyway. If what they say has gone against the Quran and Sunnah, so uh, the Sheikh goes on to say, and he, he mentions an ayah. So the Sheikh brings an evidence for this, uh, and this is uh, 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 from Surah at Tawbah, verse thirty-one. So from Surah to Tawbah, verse 31. <clears throat> Let's pull this up. Surah to Tawbah, verse 31. They, Jews and Christians, took their rabbis and their monks to be their lords besides Allah by obeying them in things which they made lawful or unlawful according to their own desires without being ordered by Allah. Uh, without being ordered by Allah. And they also took as their lord the Messiah, son of uh, Maryam, Mary. So the Sheikh, he says that, <coughs> he mentions this in this paragraph that even though that is aimed um, from the specific uh, perspective, is aimed at the, about the Christians and the Jews, it also uh, carries a general, it was generality, and anybody who fits into that description, it's it, 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 that, that's upon them as well. So the Sheikh says, "Fala mithlu fa'lahum, fa'la mithla fa'lahum, or mithlu fa'lahum. Faman khalafa ma amr Allah bi wa rasulhi sallallahu alaihi wasallam bi anna hukma bayn al nasi bi ghairi manzil Allah aw talaba dalika itibaan lima yahwahu wa yuriduhu faqad khala'a rabqat al Islam aw khala'a rabqat al Islam wa al imani min unqihi." So then the Sheikh says, so whoever does anything like that with regards to um, uh, following other than the Quran and the Sunnah and giving precedence to something else, <coughs> then they basically, uh, their Iman has been, let's say one way of being removed from their neck has been taken away from them, their Iman in Allah, Jalla wa Allah. Has been taken, the iman has been taken from them. Because, as the Sheikh will explain, from iman is to be happy uh, with what the Quran and the Sunnah judges by and be happy with the judgments that it makes and be accepting of it and be pleased with it without any uh, dispute or, or, or hatred or turning away from it or thinking that something else is better. The Sheikh will explain this in more detail, inshallah, as we go on. <clears throat> So then the Sheikh says, فَقَدْ خَلَأَ رَبْقَةَ الْإِسْلَامِ وَالْإِيمَانِ مِنْ أُنْقِهِ وَإِنْ زَعْمَ أَنَّهُمْ أُمِنْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى أَنْكَرَ عَلَى مَنْ أَرَادَ ذَلِكَ وَأَكْذَبَهُمْ فِي زَعْمِهِمْ الْإِيمَانِ لِمَا فِي ذِمْنِ قَوْلِهِ يَزْعُمُونَ مَنْ مِنْ نَفْيِ إِيمَانِهِمْ فَإِنَّ كَاذِبٌ لِمُخَالَفَتِهِ لِمُوجِبِهَا وَعَمْلِهِ بِمَا يُنَافِيهَا يُحَقِّقُ هَذَا قَوْلُ تَعَالَى وَقَدْ أُمِرُوا أَنْ يَكْفُرُوا بِهِ So then the Sheikh mentions uh, with regards to the people who think that, you know, they, they, they upon Islam, for example, but they're ruling by other than what Allah sent down or judging between themselves by other than Allah uh, sent down. Um, uh, and then, you know, even though they think that, that you know, they're upon Islam or whatever it may be. And then the Sheikh says that uh, uh, what verifies this is uh, uh, the speech of Allah where he said, وَقَدْ أُمِرُوا أَنْ يَكْفُرُوا بِهِ And that they were commanded to uh, reject it, i.e. Um, judging by other than what Allah has sent down. So that's an important point that um, you have to have this uh, negation aspect of anything other than Allah's judgment. That 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 we we reject it. There has to be that affirmation of rejection. Like as in, you affirm that that everything that Allah sent down, that we accept it and we affirm it and we follow it, and at the same time uh, we reject everything other than uh, what Allah sent down. So man-made laws, for example, man-made laws. That's probably the best word to use. Uh -huh. 
So that a part of that ayah um, is from verse 60, where, what we uh, uh, read earlier on, actually, from Surah Tanisa. Then the Sheikh says, Yeah, because then the Sheikh says, because why do we need to reject it? He says, because uh, uh, from the uh, uh, the pi- uh, from the pillars of Tawheed is rejecting a Tawhid, so that's rejecting uh, ruling uh, rule uh, being ruled by other than what Allah has sent down, or ruling by other than what Allah sent down. That's an aspect of Tawhid and a pillar of it. <coughs> then the Sheikh goes on to say, "Kama fi ayat al Baqarah." So then, as he mentioned from ayat al ayat al Baqarah, and then he's in the footnotes here. فَمَنْ يَقْفُرْ بِتَعْوُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ إِسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْأُرْبَةِ الْمُثْقَةِ And he mentions it actually here down here, so as we read along. So let's have a look at that ayah, verse 256. Allah says in verse 256, towards the end, Whoever disbelieves in Ta'ut and believes in Allah, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that will never break. So that's the part that the Sheikh has mentioned here. In context of what he's saying. إِلَى إِيمَانٌ بِهِ And the Sheikh says, why is the rejection, uh, why would you need to reject it? It's because um, uh, judging uh, with um, other than what Allah has sent down is shows your belief in it, your iman in that. So it has to be rejected because it's false. Because Allah, as the Sheikh mentioned earlier, Allah is the one uh, who sends down the rules and the laws and the legislation, and it, it's it's uh, and it, it's used um, to judge between the people by. Yeah? The Sheikh goes on to say, "وَنَفْيُ الْإِيمَانِ عَمَّنَ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنْزَلَ اللَّهُ يَدُلُّ عَلَى أَنَّ أَنَّ تَحْكِيمَ شَرَّ اللَّهِ إِيمَانٌ إِيمَانٌ وَأَقِيدَةٌ وَإِبَادَةٌ وَإِبَادَةٌ لِلَّهِ يَجْبُ أَنْ أَنْ يَدِينَ بِهَا الْمُسْلِمُ فَلَا يُحَكِّمْ شر الله من أجل أن تحكيمي أصلح للناس أصلح للناس وأضبط للأمن فقط فإن بعض الناس يرتكز على هذا الجانب وين وينسى الجانب الأول والله سبحانه قد عاب على من يحكم شر شر الله لأجل مصلحة لأجل مصلحة نفسه من دون تعبد من دون تعبد لله تعالى فقال سبحانه so let's just stop there for a second then the sheikh says that um, he goes on to say that it negates iman it negates the, uh, an iman of the one who uh, judges by other than what Allah has sent down um, and that demonstrates also uh, judging by uh, uh, that also demonstrates that judging by uh, the Sharia uh, is Iman and it's our belief and it's from our creed and it's from our belief and it's from uh, worshipping Allah and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's obligatory that we, that the Muslim he, he, he practices this and he judges by what Allah sent down so he doesn't for example he doesn't um, because it's worship then and it's part of our belief then he doesn't um, rule by what Allah sent down for the reason of um, for, for the following reasons, for example, or because it's it's the more it's because it's the most upright for the people, or it's more precise for or uh, more better, for example, for um, safety, etc. Because he says that some of the people they focus their attention on this aspect as in the worldly benefits that may be associated with it. And they forget the aspect, the first and the more important aspect, and that is because it's worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we're doing it because we are worshipping and following what Allah has commanded us to do. And obviously it's, 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 um, it's, um, it's an embarrassment and doesn't look good Upon the person who uses uh, and judges by what Allah sent down for uh, for for self benefit, for a benefit for himself, etc., uh, without actually worshiping Allah, or by way of knowing that it's worship, it's, it's a type of worship, is worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And then the Sheikh mentions an ayah from uh, verse 
48 and 49 of Surah An-Nur. So let's have a look at that. Surah An-Nur, verse 48 and 49. And when they are called to Allah, i.e. His words, the Quran and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to judge between them, lo, a party of them refuse to come and turn away. But if the right is with them, they come to Him willingly with submission. So that clarifies what the Shaykh has said. And then, the Sheikh goes on to say, فَهُمْ لَا يَحْتَمُّونَ إِلَّا بِمَا يَحُونَ So the Sheikh says that they don't really care about uh, things except that which uh, desire. So if there's something in their favor, as mentioned here, as, as, we, as, as we read just now, then, you know, they'll, they'll lean towards that by faith and they're, they're not bothered. Uh, then the Sheikh says, وَمَا خَالَفَ هَوَاهُمْ أَرَدُوا عَنْهُ يَلَّهُمْ لَا so then the Sheikh says that obviously because the desires they follow the desires in this affair and they're not doing it for the sake of uh, following the Quran and Sunnah and following the commands of Allah Jalla wa Ala and, and worship and for, this, for the sake of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that, that's what's upon them and that's what Allah has charged them to do yeah or commanded them to do then the Sheikh goes on to another topic the subtopic of, of what we're talking about here. And he says, uh, حكمن, حكمن So this is uh, an important topic because um, uh, a lot of people uh, uh, fall into error with regards to this and it's important, it's very important um, to know uh, this affair properly so you don't fall into error. And this is to do with what is the ruling uh, on the one who judges or rules by other than what Allah has sent down. The Shaykh says, قال الله تعالى وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Surah Al-Ma'idah verse 44. So let's have a look. Surah Al-Ma'idah verse 44. And let me find it here. Give me one second. And whosoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed, such are the kafirun, i.e. disbelievers of a lesser degree, as they do not act on Allah's laws. The Shaykh goes on to say, فِي هَذِهِ الْآيَةُ الْكَرِيمَةِ أَنَّ الْحُكْمَ بِغَيْرِ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ كُفْرٌ وَهَذَا الْكُفْرُ تَارَةً يَكُونُ كُفْرًا أَكْبَرٌ يُنْقَلُ عَنِ الْمِلَّةِ وَتَارَةً يَكُونُ كُفْرًا أَسْفَرْ لَا يَخْرُجْ مِنَ الْمِلَّةِ وَذَلِكَ بِحَسَبِ حَالِ الْحَاكِمِ So then the Shaykh mentions something very important and he says in, in the Shaykh says in, the, in this ayah that we read he says that the, the judgment or judging or ruling by other than what Allah sent down is disbelief. And he says that this disbelief, sometimes it is um, disbelief of a lesser degree, as we read in the translation of the meanings of the ayah. And it does not take the person out of the fold of Islam. And sometimes it is uh, the type of uh, disbelief. Um, sorry, uh, let me say that again. I was ready the wrong way around. Sometimes it is a disbelief that is a major type of disbelief and it takes the person out of the fold of, of Al-Islam. And sometimes it is disbelief of a lesser degree which does not take the person out of the fold of Al-Islam. And that is with regard to the condition of the one who is judging the Shaykh he goes on to say, فَإِنَّهُ إِنْ اِتَقَدَ عَنَّ الْحُكْمَ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ غَيْرُ وَاجِبُ وَأَنَّهُ مُخَيِّرْ فِيهِ وَاسْتَهَانَ بِحُكْمِ اللَّهِ وَأَتَقَدَ أَنَّ غَيْرَهُ مِنَ الْقَوَانِينِ مِنَ الْقَوَانِينِ وَالنَّظْمِ الْوَضْعِيَّةِ أَحْسَنْ مِنْهُ وَأَنَّهُ لَا يُصْلِهُ لِهَذَا الزَّمَانِ أَوْ أَرَادَ بِالْحُكْمِ بِغَيْرِ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ so let's pay attention to this now because this is the really important part. The Shaykh he goes on to say 
that that she says in so basically it depends if the person ends up falling into kufr the major kufr and leaves the fold of islam in any of the following for example if he believes he or, he or she so if he believes that the that the rule or the judgment or judging by other than what allah sent down uh is not obligatory uh, sorry so basically if the person believes the one who's judging believes that uh judging by what allah sent down is not obligatory so for so judging by the sharia is not obligatory or if they believe they have a choice in the affair or if they uh believe uh believe uh, or if they um a mock or make it of a lesser affair with regards to the sharia or if they believe that other than the the laws that Allah sent down or other uh, other than that for example the rules man made laws for example uh, and statutes and other things uh, that have been made by man are better or if uh, or that he comes with a, uh, the ideology that um, those laws are not fit for uh, the present time. Or if he wants to rule by other than what Allah sent down to seeking pleasure from the kuffar or to please, uh, to please the disbelievers and the hypocrites, then this is all of that which the shaykh has mentioned just there is major disbelief and it takes the person out of the fold of Islam. Then the Shaykh goes on to say, وَإِنِ اِتَقَدَ وُجُوبُ الْحُكْمِ بِمَنْزِلَ اللَّهِ وَعِلْمَهُ فِي هَذِي الْوَاقِعَةِ وَعَدَلَ عَنْهُ مَعْ اَتِرَافِهِ بِأَنَّ مُسْتَحَقٌ لِلْعُقُوبَةِ فَهَذَا عَاصٍ وَيُسَمَّ كَافِرًا كُفْرًا أَسْغَى Then the Shaykh says in the next sentence, However, if the person believes that it's obligatory to rule by all, by the law, by the laws that Allah has sent down, and he knows this, and he knows this affair, but he turns away from ruling by it. Um, but he admits that, uh, and he admits it, and he admits this. Then, and also he knows that he is uh, open to punishment; that will be punished. Then this person. Is categorized as uh, um, uh, disobedient, and you call this and, and the and the ruling on this person then is the lesser uh, disbelief, which doesn't take him out of the fold of Islam. Then the next one, the Sheikh says, "Wa in jahla hukm Allah fihi ma abdli juhdihi was tifrari was wasihi fi ma'rifat al hukmi wa akhtaa fahada muhti." Then the Sheikh says, if a person, if he was ignorant of, 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 of a particular law, for example, and he tried his best and put most of his effort in trying to find and to judge by, uh, or judge by, uh, by a matter or an affair uh, uh, as best as he could, um, then this person is, is one who is mistaken and has made a mistake. Then the Shaykh says, لَهُ أَجْرٌ عَلَىٰ إِشْتِحَادِ وَخَطَعُهُ مَغْفُورٌ Then this is like in the case of, of, of uh, where someone's trying to judge with regards to the Qur'an and the Sunnah as best as they can, uh, but they weren't able, they end up making a mistake, but they use the correct means and methods uh, and way, but they, they obviously made a mistake. Then the Shaykh says, this person has made a mistake, and in that then uh, he, has a, uh, uh, he has a reward for his effort, that is put in, uh, and his mistake is forgiven. So the Sheikh he he mentions he refers this statement to a book, the Sharh Tahawiyah. So uh, this is from the book uh, uh, of the explanation of uh, 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 the um, the uh, the creed of Imam at Tahawi, uh, page as you can see, page three hundred and sixty-three to. 
وهذا في الحكم في في القضيه الخاصه so he says, so he says was that this is a, a, a judgment uh, or ruling with regards to specific, uh, these specific affairs وأما الحكم في القضايا العامة so with regards to the general ruling now he's talking about the general ruling generally speaking he goes on to say that differs he goes on to say قال شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية فإن الحكم إذا كان دينا لكنه حكم بغير علم كان من أهل النار وإن كان عالما لكنه حكم بخلاف الحق الذي يعلمه كان من أهل النار وإذا حكم بلا عد ولا علم أولى أن يكون من أهل النار وهذا إذا حكم في قضية في قضية في قضية لشخص وأما إذا حكم حكم عام Okay, let's stop there because it changes the topic. So then the Shaykh, he quotes um, uh, from Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, where, where he talks about, he says, if a uh, person who is making a judgment is religious, is known for his religiosity and devoutness, but he rules and makes a judgment uh, without knowledge, then he is from the people of the fire. Next uh, person, then he says, if if it is if it is a scholar or a, or a alim a scholar or knowledgeable person however he makes a judgment which goes against the truth or the correct position and he uh, uh, which he knows then and he goes against the correct position and he knows the correct position but he goes against it with his judgment or ruling then he's from the people of the fire <coughs> Then if a person judges without being just or with, without knowledge, then he goes, it's, that person is more deserving of being from the people of the fire. Then the shaykh goes on to say, So this is with regards to men ruling in the affair of um, uh, a person's issue, a, 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 a person's particular issue, specific issue. Now the shaykh talks about uh, the affair, uh, the general affair of ruling. He says, وَأَمَّا إِذَا حَكْمَ حُكْمًا عَامًا Like a general rule, uh, other than a particular person, like for the for a group of people, for the masses. فَإِذَا وَأَمَّا إِذَا حَكْمَ حُكْمًا عَامًا فِي دِينِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَجَعَلَ الْحَقِّ بِالْبَاطِلًا وَالْبَاطِلْ حَقًّا وَالسُنَّةِ بِدْعَى وَالْبِدْعَى سُنَّةً وَالْمَعْرُوفِ مُنْكَرْ وَالْمُنْكَرْ مَعْرُوفًا وَنَهَا عَمَّا عَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وأمر بما نهى الله عنه ورسوله ورسوله فهذا لون آخر يحكم فيه رب رب العالمين وإله المرسلين مالك مالك يوم الدين الذي له الحمد في في الأولى والآخرة. So then uh, the Sheikh he goes on to say with regards to passing general judgments for the Muslims when it comes to this. Then, then he goes on to say, for example, the person makes the uh, truth for, uh, falsehood, and he makes the falsehood to be seen as the truth, and he makes a sunnah to be seen as a bid'ah, and he makes a bid'ah, religious innovation, to be seen as a, a sunnah from the sunnah of the Prophet. He makes good to be seen as evil, and he makes evil to be seen as good. Then the Shaykh says, and he obviously. Uh, uh, Forbids uh, us, uh, ruling by uh, by that which um, what, uh, what Allah has commanded, and he negates that or forbids or um, opposes that which Allah has commanded him with and the Messenger of So the Sheikh says, "Wa rabiha naha Allahu anhu wa rasuluhu." For how long after the Sheikh says that this is a different colon, a different light, a different aspect, because the person is judging uh, with regards to. Uh, and opposing what Allah sent down. Uh, and he, he goes on to say, and the Shaykh mentions uh, an ayah here. So the Shaykh, he mentions an ayah uh, from Surah al Qasas, verse 88, with regards to what he's saying. So let's have a look at that. And invoke not any other ilah God along with Allah. La ilaha illahu. None has a right to be worshipped in truth, but he, everything will perish. Save his face. He is so. This is the part we focus on. His is the decision, and to him you all shall be returned. So it goes back to 
what Allah has sent down as judgment. <clears throat> and then the Shaykh uh, mentions another ayah. So then the first one that we read in English is Lahul Hukmu wa ilayhi turja'un from Surah Al Qasas, verse 88, towards the end of the, the, uh, the latter part of the verse. Then the next verse from Surah Al Fat, verse 28, the Shaykh mentions, he says, where Allah says, Huwalladi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa deen il haqqi li yudhirahu ala deen kullihi wa kafa billahi shahida. So then, if we go there and have a look at the meaning of that, Surah Al Fatih, verse 28, we shall see what the Shaykh has used as evidence. He it is who has sent his messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with guidance and the religion of truth, Islam, that he may make it Islam superior over all religions, and all sufficient is Allah as a witness. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, وَقَالَ أَيْذًا وَلَا رَيْبَ أَنَّ من لم يأتقد وجوب الحكم بما أنزل الله على رسوله فهو كافر. so then uh, continuing with the, what uh, Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah mentioned, the Sheikh says he also said that there's no doubt that the one who believes uh, that uh, it's not obligatory obligatory to rule by that which Allah sent down and that the messenger came with, uh, then uh, this is disbelief. Then the Sheikh says, فَمَنْ إِسْتَحَلَّ أَنْ يَحْكُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِمَا يَرَاهُ هُوَ عَدْلًا مِنْ غَيْرِ اتِّبَاعِ لِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ Also, from what the Sheikh was saying earlier, uh, momentarily uh, ago, he mentioned moments ago, that uh, the person who, who rules, uh, who makes things halal himself, makes things permissible when they're haram, for example, and starts ruling and making judgments, uh, of that which he sees to be fit for purpose or to be correct and just uh, uh, without actually uh, referring to and going back to that which Allah sent down is disbelief. This is also what uh, Ibn Taymiyyah rahmahullah said. فَإِنَّهُ مَا مِنْ أُمَّةٍ إِلَّا وَهِيَا تَأْمُرُ بِالْحُكْمِ بِالْعَدْلِ وَقَدْ يَكُونُ الْعَدْلِ فِي دِينِهَا مَا يَرَاهُ أَكَابِرَهُمْ So also the Sheikh mentions that when people don't use, the Muslims are not using uh, and judging by way uh, of what Allah sent down, then uh, what do they refer to? They refer to their traditions and what their people do and what their customs are and they rule by this. And obviously this is erroneous and it's wrong. And and, and they see oh, that this to be fit or oh, what we're upon, what our people were upon. Uh, and, you know, these are the things that we've done for years and our ancestors have done it and, you know, uh, like this. So... The, that, that's obviously incorrect as well. The Sheikh says, Bal kathir min al muntasibina ila al Islam yahkumuna bi adati. The Sheikh says that there's a lot of Muslims that actually who are ascribed to Islam, uh, they rule by these um, habits and traditions uh, or, and customs of theirs. And the Sheikh says, Alati lam yanzilu Allahu ka sawadif al badia, ay adat min salafim. So then the Sheikh talks about here that they're ruling by what their elders did their elders and not ruling by that which Allah sent down. وَكَانُوا الْأُمَرَاءَ الْمُتَعَوْنَ وَيُرَوْنَا أَنَّ هَذَا هُوَ الَّذِي يَنْبَغِي الْحُكُمْ بِهِ دُونَ الْكِتَابُ وَالسُنَّةِ وَهَذَا هُوَ الْكُفْرِ فَإِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ أَسْلَمُوا وَلَكِنْ لَا يَحْكُمُونَ إِلَّا بِالْعَادَاتِ الْجَارِيَةِ الْجَارِيَةِ الَّتِي يَأْمُرُ بِهَا التَّعُونَ So then the Sheikh says that a lot of people they accept Islam or they accept Islam but they rule uh, by other than it and they, ref and they rule by what their elders uh, are upon and what their traditions are and the customs which goes against uh, what Allah has sent down in terms of laws and judgments and what to use as uh, and what to judge by. The Sheikh says, idha, uh, So then the Sheikh says that this is disbelief. Idha arafu annahu la yajuz lahum al illa bi falam yaltazimu dhalik so then the Shaykh says, if they know that it's upon them to judge by what Allah sent down, the Sharia, and they know that, and they know it's obligatory, and they know that it's not, it's impermissible to uh, rule by other than that, but then they stick to it anyway, and they rule by other than what Allah sent, and they, uh, you know, they say, oh no, it's fine, and they're doing it, and, and, and they think it's fine. And, and they make it uh, halal and uh, permissible. 
to uh, rule by other than what Allah sent down, and they're on on this uh, thought process <coughs> and this ideology, then uh, they are uh, uh, they are disbelievers. And then Sheikh says intaha. So that's what uh, Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah has mentioned. The Sheikh brought that for our benefit. Then the Sheikh says, وَقَالَ الشَّيْخِ مُمُدْ بْنُ إِبْرَاهِيمِ وَأَمَّا الَّذِي قِيلَ فِيهِ إِنَّهُ كُفْرٌ دُونَ كُفْرٌ إِذَا حَاكْمَ إِلَى غِيرِ لَهِ مَعَ اتِّقَادِ أَنَّ مَعَ اتِّقَادٍ أَنَّهُ عَاصٍ وَأَنَّ حُكْمَ حُكْمَ وَأَنَّ حُكْمَ اللَّهِ هُوَ الْحَقِّ فَهَذَا الَّذِي يَصْدُرُ مِنْهُ الْمَرَّةِ وَنَحْوَهَا أَمَّا الَّذِي جَعَلَ قَوَانِينَ بِتَرْتِيبٍ وَتَخْدِيءٍ فَهُوَ كُفْرٌ وَإِنْ قَالُوا أَخْطَأْنَا وَحَكَمَ الشَّرْعَ أَعْدَلٌ فَهَذَا كُفْرٌ نَاقِرٌ عَلَى الْمِلَّةِ So then let's just take a pause here because there's a few uh, couple of different points being mentioned. Um, the Sheikh says, then he quotes uh, uh, the Sheikh Havidullah, uh, uh, he quotes uh, another scholar, he says, وَقَالَ الشَّيْخْ مُحَمَدِ بْنُ إِبْرَاهِيمِ He says that uh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Ibrahim said, so as for the one who said that it is kufr, uh, 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 or as for the one where it is said for him that this person has uh, committed the lesser form of disbelief, then it is the one who judges uh, um, with other than what Allah sent down with the belief, with the he has this belief, with the belief that he is a He's being disobedient and is a sinner, and that he believes that the uh, the law of Allah is the truth and is what should be ruled by. So the Sheikh says that this is what uh, was mentioned. The Sheikh uh, explains. He says this is what we mentioned earlier on in the lesson. And the affair of that person is that is a sinner and he doesn't leave the fold of Al Islam. However, the person who makes laws and statutes and uh, you know man-made law in general let's use that term man-made law and follows that and you know uh, he, uh, and uh, and uh, he you know he seeks to vanquish uh the law of allah by way of these man-made laws and takes them as a precedent and thinks they are better and they are more just and things like this then this person actually has uh, fallen into the greater form of disbelief and he leaves the fold of Islam by way of this. Then the Shaykh says, فَفَرْقُ فَفَرَّقَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ بَيْنَ الْحُكْمَ الْجُزْئِ الَّذِي لَا يَتَكَرَّرْ وَبَيْنَ الْحُكْمَ الْعَامِ الَّذِي هُوَ الْمُرْجِئِ فِي جَمِيعِ الْأَحْكَامِ وَغَالِبِيَا So then the Shaykh says that the, the scholar that he quoted there, Muhammad ibn Ibrahim, has made a distinction and he differentiates between um, uh, a one-off like judgment or uh, a judgment uh, that's partly you know, a part judgment, for example, that doesn't repeat itself. That's for that person, first one that I mentioned, the description of the first one. But then there's the other one, or the latter description of the second person who falls into kufr, is the one who makes it a generality, that he makes it, uh, the law, this new man-made law, whatever it is, uh, that he's judging by and thinks is better, and all the rest of it is more, just makes it a, a, a general ruling that everyone needs to be judged by, for example, like that. Then obviously this person is uh, falls into major disbelief, or or most of the time as well, or most of the time, or most of the time. So it needs to be looked at carefully. Then the Sheikh says, "And obviously then the obviously the Sheikh has already mentioned this, so I won't repeat it. وذلك لأن من نحى شريعة الإسلامية وجعل القانون الوضعي بديلا منها." فهذا دليل على أنه يرى أن القانون أن القانون أحسن وأصلم من الشريعة. and that is why is the person who rules and brings new laws uh, and replaces them with Islamic law. for example, totally replace them completely um, with laws, uh, man-made laws. and why is this person uh, become a disbeliever? why? because the Sheikh says because the person clearly uh, from their actions shows that they believe. Uh, in their heart and their creed is that uh, the laws that they, the man-made laws that they've come with are better and more upright uh, and more beneficial than the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Shaykh says, وَهَذَا لَا شَكْ أَنَّهُ كُفْرٌ أَكْبَرٌ يَخْرُجُ مِنَ الْمِلَّةِ وَيُنَاقِدُ التَّوْحِيدِ And the Shaykh says, there is no doubt in this one that it is disbelief, it's major disbelief and it takes the person out of the fold of Al-Islam uh, because it negates 
the person's tawheed and it, it's in direct challenge to the person's tawheed. Inshallah, we'll stop there. We've arrived to the end of the lesson, so we'll stop there. Uh, inshallah. Barakallah fikum. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.